Now, my next guest was a parliamentary colleague of mine for some years, a parliamentarian of some note, actually, a man always guaranteed to raise uh, the awkward, difficult question and not to take necessarily no or yes for an answer. Nowadays, he's the Director of Communications at Motorcycle Action Group. He is, of course, the former MP, Limbit Opic. Limbit, welcome uh, to the show. Wonderful to see you again. That's not a very environmentally friendly job, is it? Are motorcycles not polluters? Well, actually, uh, if we shifted from four wheels to two, you would cut emissions because, by definition, uh, an, uh, a motorcycle is a tiny fraction of the weight and size of a car. So you should start using a scooter. And you can go electric if you want to as well. So uh, actually, on the list of, uh, of offenders, that's one of the very few uh, that I would actually say you're not doing too badly if you shift from four wheels to two. Good answer. I'm sure you've done that before. Uh, the, uh, the big conference coming up this year in Glasgow, of all places, which is somewhat polluted city these days. Uh, um, rats are running wild. The nationalist controlled local authority can't even empty the bins. It's going to be a potential embarrassment for those of us who love the city, but the whole world's coming there and there's a frenzy building. Uh, how do you view it all? Hypocrisy, that's how I view it. Uh, we're told not to travel, we're told not to fly, but while everybody else can do virtual meetings, like you and I are doing now, apparently these people, the environmentalists uh, all over the world, they can fly to get together in Glasgow. Uh, and someone needs to explain why this do as I say, not as I do, is in any way acceptable. Uh, in terms of the debate itself, and perhaps this is where we really get into the controversy, I'm not even convinced that what they're talking about is on the money scientifically. Well, uh, there's a few people like that. I'm one of them and you're another. But tell us what you mean by that. Uh, what I mean is that it seems to me that the virtue signaling which goes with this, this remorseless climate emergency terminology uh, where we're being told that we've got 100 days or five years to save the world, I just actually think it's, it's gone crazy now. And it's totally diverted away from science. I'll give you one example. You think the polar bears are going extinct. But actually, more polar bears now than there have been since the 1960s. Uh, the Antarctic is melting away. Actually, it looks like the Antarctic is showing no real signs of climate change at all. That's an arguable point, uh, but it's certainly not the case uh, that everything is indicating uh, that we're heading into a terrible phase of global warming. And here's the fundamental thing, George. I'm not even persuaded that the climate that is changing is being caused by human beings in any significant way. Uh, what else could it be? Just cyclical? It is cyclical. There's no, one of the things that really annoys me when uh, I debate this with, with people from the Green Movement is they say, we're going to stop climate change. Well, good luck with that, because the climate has changed for the last two and a half thousand million years. That's roughly length of time the atmosphere has got the proportions it's got in it now. We've had ice ages, we've had warm periods. And so when they say, uh, oh, well, you're a climate change denier. No, it's the other way around. I'm insistent that the climate will always change. And we're not going to be able to stop that. Uh, what I'm really bothered about, though, is that they give the impression that the human race is so powerful that they can actually stop these cyclical movements. There's something called the Milankovitch cycles. Uh, the Greens probably think that's a kind of a bicycle. Actually, it's the way the Earth goes around the sun, how it wobbles uh, and, and how it rotates. Milankovitch cycles seem to be really important, in my view, to the way that the Earth gets heated and cooled. When it gets further away from the sun, there's less heat. Now, nobody in these demonstrations has even heard of that. Until we can have a proper scientific debate where people can disagree with what I say, but until we have a proper debate, we're not actually going to get close to the science. And instead, what happens is people like me get shouted down as climate change deniers with all the sinister undertones that phrase has. There's a lot of uh, uh, political cross-dressing uh, on this issue. Uh, many of the people that are most up in arms about being forced to wear a mask and so on, mm. uh, are amongst those uh, who are effectively calling for a real proper tyranny. Uh, the tyranny of the environmental lobby, which will change our lives if they can, mm. 
in ways which are far more disruptive, unpleasant and profound uh, than the mere wearing of a mask in Tesco. Howard Cox from Fairfield UK has just uh, launched a report which estimates the cost of going carbon neutral just for the UK is £1.4 trillion. That's just a ludicrous amount of money, especially if you do begin to realise that the climate will always change. Secondly, as you say, there is this tyranny where I am bound to get criticism for talking on your show and daring to question the orthodoxy, which is the new religion which is the environmental emergency. We're all going to die. It's our fault. But if you repent, you will be saved. And that's the problem we've got. So I, I'm beginning to speak up, saying, OK, come and have the debate. Challenge the figures that I've got. Tell me about why the polar bear population has increased. Then tell me why you think what you do about the Antarctic. If we can actually begin to have that a serious debate, then we're making progress. But you get shouted down as a climate change denier, as I said before. And that isn't science. The scientific method has been thrown out the window and replaced by that virtue signaling I told you about before. And what's going on with the Conservative Party? They didn't get elected as the Greens. And for some reason, Boris Johnson is on this front. I like the guy personally, but I, I just don't understand why he thinks he's onto a winner when he's telling us how to live our lives, but inviting thousands of people to fly to Glasgow when they could all do it on Zoom like you and me this evening. It's the apocalyptic uh, approach which disturbs me that, We've lived through, you and I have lived through, you've got five days left to save the NHS. You've got seven days left to save the pound. Uh, you've, you, you may even be too late to save the planet, but we need to try anyway. I mean, this uh, apocalyptic approach, uh, the Greta Thunberg approach, weeping, bitter tears, uh, blaming her parents' generation, her grandparents' generation, and so on. Just like the COVID uh, thing, it's, it's going to prove very deeply divisive and in the same vein, lacking in scientific precision. More, 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 more heat than light. That's exactly the problem, George. Take, for example, CO2. Not many people realize that there's plenty of evidence, if not conclusive, but plenty of evidence to suggest that CO2 is a lag factor. What that means is it could be that the evidence suggests uh, as temperatures go up, then CO2 goes up. As temperatures come down, then CO2 comes down. It's not really clear what the relationship is there. But we're being told that something which is essentially a trace gas and a good fertilizer, because we depend on it for plant life, CO2, is wrecking the planet. Well, water vapor is 490 times more important as a greenhouse gas uh, than, than CO2. But we fixate on CO2 because they can ban petrol motorcycles. They can ban your car and your diesel and everything else, ban your, your gas stove for that matter, because it's been made the enemy. Actually, there's an argument to say that we should have more CO2 because it greens the planet. NASA, which is some extent complicit, I think, in the abuse of science on this one. But NASA itself admits that the world's got greener, and it's probably because there's a bit more CO2. And what do we do in greenhouses? Professional greenhouse uh, operators, they triple the amount of CO2 that's in those greenhouses because the plants love it. Any gardener knows this. But you can't get to the science exactly because of that tyranny, because you're shouted down, you're excluded, or you're told, Oh, we don't need to have balance on this because the science is settled. As soon as someone says that, they've mm. abandoned science. Yes. Uh, and uh, well, the Afghan uh, story that we're covering tonight is another good example. When the House of Commons was unanimous about something, it was almost always unanimously wrong. None of us, I presume, are saying that we should not try and lead a cleaner, greener life. Uh, that we should have less plastic, less waste, keep the plastic out of the oceans, uh, maintain our wildlife and our uh, insect diversity and so on. We're all in favor of that. We just don't want to wear a hair shirt and go and live in a cave as the epitome or the apex of human civilization, do we? Exactly. 
Uh, I've got solar panels on my roof. It's a decision I sorely regret, by the way, because it's so uneconomic, it's unbelievable. And uh, I greened my house up in Wales. Not that anyone cared. They still voted me out. But I'm not bitter about that. I reduced the, the, the consumption to 300 watts in that house. I did that because it's just smart. Uh, if you can get a car which does 80 miles per gallon instead of 50, what's well, not to like? But so, and so sensible husbandry of our resources is a really good idea. And also, uh, I, I, I don't like the idea of pointlessly wasting uh, those resources. Where I really object is that panic, the climate emergency. But here's the danger, a bit like the wildfires in Greece, this is going to burn itself out because when the world doesn't collapse, when we do get a heavy snow one winter, when uh, the temperatures go down, all of this, people will just decide, hang on, we've been sold a pup here, but at what cost, George? The danger is we'll have banned uh, petrol and diesel vehicles by 2030, which I don't think is scientifically sustainable. Uh, and even more that, we're going to have outages in, in the grid because where's all the power coming from? Same people who want us to drive electric, despite the millions of tons of electric battery waste that's going to create, don't like nuclear power. And you're not going to be able to do this with solar and wind. And they were against the seven barrage ever since I was at university in Bristol. So they created a, a hopeless situation where eventually something's got to give. And I suspect it'll be the environmental uh, uh, agenda. And watch this now. China really uh, coming up with eco economic success and so on. They're more than happy to sell us all these electric vehicles and everything else without doing it themselves. Why? Because they're going to be far more economically viable than, for example, Britain. So we're going to become the poor relation precisely because of what I think is a scientifically extremely shaky agenda. And it's, as I said before, about virtue signaling, about looking about who can be the greenest, regardless of whether that's what's best for the, for the world. Well, they're all vying, but as you say, the most surprising one is, is the Conservative Party. Uh, it's worth, I think, uh, finishing on this point, that there's actually nothing all that conservative about the British Conservative Party, right back to David Cameron's hugging uh, huskies and all the rest. They've been adapting and adopting every fad, the, uh, the, every liberal fad, small l, Lembit, Every small yeah. <laughs> liberal, liberal fad that comes along. Why? Uh, I'd, I'm going to invite Boris live on your show. Here's an exclusive for you, George. Let's just have a chat. I'll, I'll lay the science as I see it, and, and he can ask any question he wants. And if I don't know something, I know quite a lot about it. I study this professionally. If I don't know something, I'll tell him. But I'll also tell him where they're wrong. Why some people suspect uh, because there are influential people in his close family. Others say that he just wants to green the blues. Uh, or thirdly, it might simply be because he can't resist this bandwagon. And you've got COP26 coming out when he can look like a world leader. As I say, Boris, I like you. Uh, I want you to do well, but you're not doing well. For the millions of people who voted conservative in this country, they didn't vote green. So please give me the chance to share the science. And I'll show you why I'm skeptical about the fact that there's a climate emergency. There isn't. There are cycles in climate change. They've always been there. We make some small difference. But at the end of the day, CO2 feeds the world. It doesn't destroy it. Well, we'll pass on that invitation right after the show. <laughs> Lembe Opic uh, of the British Motorcycle, sorry, the Motorcycle Good. Action, Action Group. Group. Yeah. Otherwise known That's as right. MAG or MAGI. <laughs> Uh, I never thought I'd hear <laughs> that acronym applied to you. Lemba Opic, thank you very much indeed for joining us.